start. Good evening. Today I'm talking to Duncan Brockwell again. It's his second time in the hot seat. Um, he has his new book, Mr. Invisible, out tomorrow. So good evening, Duncan. Would you like to tell us good some evening. more about Mr. Invisible? Right, Mr. Invisible is a um, stalker thriller, I guess I'd class it as. Um, it's about, uh, starts off with a detective um, finding a body in a wheelie bin, you know, one of those big old containers. And uh, she's been brutally murdered. Um, they find a tattoo that they think they can uh, try and identify the body through. Um, and that starts the proceedings. Um, and then it swaps over to Sydney, to Bondi Beach in Sydney um, on 4th of January. So the day that it comes out is also the day that the story is set on. And it's also my birthday as well tomorrow. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, so it starts off with, uh, there's three couples in the book. Um, they're all kind of like it people. So they're the, you know, sort of minor celebrities. Um, there's a, a, what do we call it? A social app called Chatter, uh, which is one that I've just made up for this story. So uh, basically a cross between um, Instagram and Twitter. And um, the main character, Georgina Shaw, she's got uh, about two and a half million followers on there. And her friends um, are all, they're all sort of jealous of her and how successful she is. They're all successful in their own right, but there, there's a lot of jealousies and petty jealousies in, in this between all the friends. Um, and then one of them, um, Oliver, he he finds her, him, her phone on the table when she's gone off to meet her boyfriend. And um, he ends up chatting to one of her followers. And then um, he basically invites the follower over to Australia from the UK to come and meet Georgina as a joke, just thinking that nothing will happen. And then the follower then goes and shows that he's bought tickets, first class tickets to Sydney. And he said that he'll meet them over there um, on the following Monday. And so he's bricking it basically. Actually, he's, at first he's kind of like, oh, it's just a load of rubbish. Um, but then they get um, videos sent through and photos sent through of him on his journey to Australia. And so they're all freaking out. Um, and Georgina wants to tell him that it's just, it was a, it was a prank and to apologize, which she does. And that sends the guy into a frenzy. And then they're basically stalked all the way through the novel. Um, and then the couples are, well, I won't go into too much details. I don't want to give too much away. Um, but there's also um, a lot of activity back home and the, the detective from the first, first scene is intermittently um, throughout it as well. Um, so he's investigating a guy called uh, um, Arthur Peebles and um, they find out very quickly who is responsible for the murder, but they can't find him because basically he's, uh, he committed murder back when he was like 14, 13, 14 at school. So he was, he was charged as a minor and then they had to give him a, a new name. And so they, they have to try and find out what that name is and then try and find him and it all leads them back to Australia and there's a massive finale a very violent confrontation at the end and uh yes yeah, so that's that's it basically but it's it's really about the dangers of um social media um about how much you put on social media um I didn't actually expect I didn't that wasn't my intention when I'm writing it but it's what it's become and it is that is what it is basically it's a, a social warning as such um obviously social media is massive now and especially helpful for authors but do you think that it is toxic and unhelpful well i don't think the platform's toxic i think people can be and i think that's what the uh, is the platform's a platform like so facebook facebook is facebook it's supposed to be there for people to keep up to date in you know uh socialize with their friends online which is what it's supposed to be it's people that make it toxic not the it's not the platform's fault that, that's my own personal opinion anyway so do you think it helps you sort of get your um books out there and your name yeah, out massive, there yeah massive. without it we wouldn't us authors wouldn't be doing anything you know if we had to rely on just word of mouth or 
older forms of marketing we wouldn't get any any books sold it's it's all done through social media these days so yeah it's needed it's necessary i love it i love it personally i love instagram i'm not so much of a fan on twitter i'm not i don't really get twitter as much um i love instagram because it's more about photos and i love facebook um i don't like some of the things that facebook do but as a platform i really like it i think it's great but yeah, I think it's really very necess very necessary for authors now, and for artists and other things like music, musicians, and you know all, all the arts. I think it's really good for. Yeah, um, you um, do you get a lot of interaction with your fans. You seem like quite a popular author. Um, I, I'm as interactive with my, with my readers as I can be. Um, when I get any messages sent through, I'm always very quick to reply to them. Um, cause I'm just not one of these people who wants to be standoffish or I don't want my readers going away going, Oh, he's a bit of a, you know, um, didn't like his response very much. So I'm as polite and friendly as I can be. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. And he, even if people don't, and I don't mind people, um, contact me and actually saying, um, you know, I wasn't so keen on that cause it's like, well, you know, that's your opinion. It's fair enough. Um, I'm not going to get bent out of shape about someone, you know, contacting me and mm -hmm. saying, I didn't this particular bit i've had a couple of those and it's like well you know that's that's your opinion i you know i respect it um nothing not, not, not much more you can say really <laughs> yeah people are special <laughs> um if you were to be transported into mr invisible would you be friends with the characters well oh no they're all they're all horrible um I've had one, one of my uh, reviewers um, has marked me down because they're not likeable. Um, and the point is, that's that's the point I'm, I was trying to make is they're not very likeable people because they're very, they're very self-centered. They're very um, focused on me. Um, they're all very jealous of other people. And it's all about how much money you earn and how many followers you have. And that that's, that kind of um, thing. So I wrote them like that. So, and they've written me down for it, or, you know, they've marked me down for it, which I, I kind of think, well, you're not supposed to like these people. So why, you know, why mark an author down if, if the desired effect has happened? You know, you don't like the characters. The point is, um, Georgina Shaw, the main character, she's, she does, um, when she does her modelling, she basically takes a quarter of that and she gives it to charity. She's got four charities that she's an ambassador for. So she's she does things for, for you know for good causes. And so she's a nice person. She's a genuinely nice person. Her boyfriend, um, he's a um he's the captain of the uh, Sydney Swans, the Aussie rules team. Um and he's, he's not into any of that, you know, doing the things for charity and none of the other um, five, four either. So they're, they're very much, um, it's all about how much money we can get and, you know, getting one up and on everyone else. So they're, they're not very nice people. And um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to meet any of them to be fair, except Georgina maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's the way I wrote them. So I, uh, I, I wanted them that way. I didn't, I don't, I don't like writing very, very good people or very, very bad. No, I like writing bad people. That's a lie. I don't like writing really, really good because they, they're kind of dull. You know, they're too good. They're just kind of dull people. So I, I like to give them a bit more of an edge. And if that main, means making them a bit more unlikable, you know, fair, fair enough. If you were to be transported into any of your books, and be part of the story, which would it be? Probably the one I'm writing now, Marvel's Marvels. I had a feeling it's, you'd say that. <laughs> it's a lot nicer. The people in it are nicer. And even, even these people haven't made ultra nice because I didn't want to. So I've, I've given them faults and, you know, flaws. Um, but it's a lovely place. It's set in a, um, basically a failing restaurant. Um, that gets turned around by um, the introduction of a, a new chef who seems to have magical qualities about him um, and he brings us a touch of magic to the uh, to the show so um, yeah I'd actually quite like to be in in that story. Me too. 
that's you've got quite a good chance of surviving to the end <laughs> yeah yeah i think everyone survives in that one so uh, yeah. there's no like there's your no, other books. no no there's no deaths there's no murders there's no uh guns explosions any of that so yeah it's all just good old human drama <laughs> i think there's a couple of fights actually a couple of punches i think but that's it and then what are you planning to write next i'm going back to horror i've got one i'm not going to say too much about this because i want this to be a surprise but i've i've had this idea for ages and it's about um a guy who um, it's snowing really 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 hard it's like a you know like a, a blizzard um it's not going to be new year's day but it's going to be around about the new year time and he's in a pub and he's walk going to try and walk to his girlfriend in the, the town nearby um and it's not snowing at that point but then he gets caught in the in the snow while he's walking to his girlfriend's and then he get he ends up getting picked up on the road by, by this woman in a truck and then she says that she'll take him back to his place and let him ring and then he can wait out the storm the hers you know she's got food and drink and that so he gets it you know he accepts that and then he gets there and that's when everything goes wrong and it's going to be really nasty sorry i've gone the other way now i've flipped <laughs> over to the dark side again i've had enough of life and i'm now back in the dark. So i've got this one all sorted out and it's um it's gonna follow the guy at the start and then it's gonna follow the detectives who are out looking for him because he's then registered as a missing person and then the girlfriend ends up looking for him as well so you can sort of imagine how many people are going to be in the firing line for this one it's going to be quite <laughs> a lot so i'm looking forward to this one <laughs> awesome me too <laughs> and then i'm thinking about doing a christmas book as well mm -hmm. and a hallmark style ultra mm -hmm. ultra um you know no bad language in it you know just wholesome Christmas entertainment because I've been watching loads of these uh, Hallmark films over Christmas and I'm thinking oh I could do that I really could so I've I've got an idea for that as well oh wow awesome uh, how many books have you got like written that I haven't been published or waiting to publish there's loads isn't there oh, right okay so um my next one due out with Bloodhound is April the 19th um, that is uh, The Hard Way, which is a standalone um, crime thriller. Um, so that's April 19th. And then I've got Marvel's Marvels, which I'll be submitting um, oof, end of January, hopefully, beginning of Feb. Um, so hopefully, if that gets taken up, then that'll be another one. Um, I've got Hellingly and Oakwood Falls. Um, they're currently with a publisher. Um, and then I've got, what else, what else have I written of? Not sent off. The American one. Oh, Feral, Feral. I'm, I'm, I'm trying Feral. to find a, I'm trying to find a publisher for Feral, um, which is the book that I've, uh, last, I finished last. Um, I've got another Southern Bells book that I've written that I could go with. I've got Trailblazer that I need to finish, um, which you've read, you've read that one um so i need to sit down at some point and finish that um but the only problem is i'm not sure how easy that will be to sell to publishers so I'm, i might leave it down the back burner um so i've got a few basically yeah um and then i've got tons of ideas that i want to make a start on because i've got uh two horrors that i want to do um the first one i've just told you about and then i've got one called uh oh what's it called the notorious six um which is going to be mental um but i think i might need a different publisher for that because it's going to be a bit too mental if you know what i mean <laughs> um, so yeah um and then yeah so i've just got i've got things in the pipeline but it's just a matter of waiting and seeing really yeah um what's i just going to ask you and did you manage to read much over christmas i've read two um over Christmas, which is actually really good for me. I'm not normally very um, quick on reading. It can take me like a month to read one book. Um, I've read um, Diana's 
latest one, the girl uh, who oh, turned a blind uh, eye. The girl who turned a blind eye. There you go. And also Liam Hansen's new one as well. And uh, yeah. um, which is out the day after mine. And then Diana's is out the day after Andy's. So, yeah. So I've read those two. They're really good. Um, so, yeah. Um, and, yeah, apart from that, I've got a couple of books that I'm going to be reading in the future. But So, yeah. Awesome. You've watched loads of films instead, haven't you? Is that where oh, you're getting all these weird loads, ideas loads from? <laughs> I, I, can, I can watch a film a day easily. At the end of the night, when I stop writing, I'll, I'll put on a film about nine o'clock. So, yeah, I'll, I can easily watch 300 and 400 films in a year, like you do with books. I only read 100 books. I'm not that good. <laughs> I, know, I know a couple of people who have read like 100, 360 odd last year it's crazy if i didn't have a degree it would be much more <laughs> and a job yeah it's very annoying gets in the way of my reading <laughs> like, work does get in the way doesn't it gets yeah it's really books, yeah it? really irritating <laughs> <laughs> i actually asked my boss to be um put as a last resort to return from furlough so hopefully he Ooh. listens to me <laughs> yeah well i hope so too thank you <laughs> No, they're, so they're taking they're taking you away from us um, authors. Yeah, my boss knows anyway because he always asks me for recommendations for books. So yeah, he knows. Although Good. I haven't seen him for ages, like months, <laughs> which is fine. Although they did give me money for Christmas, so I can nice. finally finally complete my Mark Tilbury signed book collection. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> um. What advice would you give to aspirant writers? I, this is one I, I just say every every time I'm asked, which is, it sounds really stupid, but write every day. And it doesn't matter if you write 100 words or, you know, uh, 4,000, but write something every day. Um, because if you get out of the habit of it, it can be really easy to get into the habit where you just don't want to do it. So you have to keep it up. Personally, I can't wait to get home from work and, and get the laptop on. I actually love the process of writing. And I hear so many authors complaining about how lonely it is or, you know, and um, I, I just don't think like that. So I'm one of the lucky ones, I guess, who actually I like the process and I love having a blank screen in front of me and then thinking, oh, what, what am I going to start with? And then thinking about how I'm going to start the the chapter that's something i just love. i love doing that and then i like looking back over it and going oh i wrote that you know I've, these characters are all mine i've just done all that so i love that that part of it um so for someone like me that is crazy busy but i want to write eventually would you say the same what, how, how do you mean like write every day because yeah. i want to write eventually yeah. but obviously like if you can find uh, most people can find half an hour an hour to write. If you're if you're in the zone, if you're into into writing and you know what you're doing, I can write a thousand words in an hour easily. So if you can do that, if you can write a thousand words every day, you'll have a book in three months. And depending on how long you want to make it, it could even be uh, two months. It only really needs to be um, what sixty thousand words is a is classed as a novel and that's what a lot of publishers will cut off at 60 and they say right anything less than 60 is it's kind of a novella or whatever and they won't take it but anything over 60,000 is valid so if you can write if you can write a thousand words a day and it's easy it really is easy it's not difficult at all a thousand words a day you'll have a book in, in two months it's, it's that simple you just do numbers you can't go wrong and, and writing a thousand words isn't difficult like I say, especially when you know what you what you want to convey over the, the chapter, it becomes really easy. And then before you know it, sometimes you can actually have too much, like I do. I've done a couple of times. Well, I've written 100,000 words and I'm only two thirds of the way through it. It's like, oh, no, no. <laughs> that's what I'm a trailblazer. So I need to shorten it and, you know, make it more concise. Um, so, yeah, so that can happen as well. Like the flip side, I've never had not enough words i've always had too many words and then you have then it's the becomes a 
and arsake to um, chunk it down. <laughs> Have there ever been any bits that you've cut out of books that you thought are too good to let go completely and then included in something else? No, not really. Um, I've had to cut a, an entire storyline off, off a book before. So um, Bad Blood, when I submitted it to Bloodhounds, um, it had the story that you've you've read now. Oh, I think you've read the, the full version, haven't you? The full unabridged version. When I um, when I wrote it, I wrote another storyline to do with the um, the drug dealing um, that side of it, and then it was decided that the two stories were competing with each other for dominance. So it was, we both decided to cut the drug dealer line out. And then I could some, you know, at some point go back to it and make that a main story. Um, but in the, in the, it hasn't transpired with that. But that's that's basically what happened with Bad Blood. That's only like one, it's probably like two thirds of the, of the story that I wrote originally. And now the, the third of the story is just words on a page on my computer now. But um, we shall see what happens with that. I could, <laughs> I could quite easily go back and make that a, another book though. Maybe a standalone, I don't know, but we shall see. Yeah, I think uh, the people that have read the series would like to know the rest of that story. Yeah, yeah. Me included. You never know, you never know. <laughs> uh, what's the most interesting thing you've found when you've been doing research? Oh, I had to, one of my characters was encased in concrete. So he was, he was basically murdered. That was, uh, oh, I won't bother saying the character's name, um, but he was... Um, killed and then encased in concrete and then in a subsequent book i was trying to find out what would happen to the body and does it turn into you know mush does it degrade does it you know stay as it is is it like a mummification where it will just stay as is no it doesn't it turns into goo is the is the interesting fact that i found out the exothermic <laughs> basically destroys the body and it ends up just coming out as goo so when they open it it'll just be a <laughs> if that's descriptive enough for you <laughs> i know anyway because of my forensic so i know that <laughs> well sort of we didn't especially just... cover being encased in concrete but you know i get the gist <laughs> yeah yeah so the body does deteriorate <laughs> and it would be a very attractive thing to look at like two years later you know crack it open it's like oh so, Their bodies yeah. aren't generally, actually, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although I want to go to the body farm. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to. It'd be fascinating. It, yeah, and also quite icky goo. And smelly, but... <laughs> and smelly as well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what else I want to ask you. Hello. If you could tell your younger self anything about writing, what would you tell yourself? Do it sooner. When did you start writing then? Oh, I started writing when I was 21 at university. Um, and I wrote two books then, one massive massive thing which is like two hundred and fifty thousand words called uh legacy of evil which i might come back to at some point actually because i like the story um and i just kept on going and going and going and just writing all this and it was like bloody hell it's like two hundred and fifty thousand words quarter of a million words there um to make this book up so um i, I thought it was great at one point i sent off some some stuff to a publisher anyway it didn't get accepted obviously um and then i wrote um one when i was at university um which is basically about kids in the city um it was a really silly thing um and then i stopped for a while and then i started again when i was working in the pub and i wrote a really great story though called uh, the road to revolution which is a political thriller um and I mixed it in with a an outbreak of a deadly disease, ironically enough. Um, but this one was man-made and it was re revolting. Um, basically, as soon as you 
inhaled this um, this like aerosol and it was on the air, then you got it and you died. There was no two ways about it. There's none of this. You recover. You you get this inside you, you're dead and it's a really unpleasant way it kills you as well so it just turns you the insides into gooey stuff basically again <laughs> again with the goo um, so that was at the same time <clears throat> and i think i also included just to make it a bit more um dramatic i think i included in a uh tornado or a hurricane as well so it was all a mismatch of dramatic things going on and it was about the assassination of um, a political figure key political figure um, and then the subsequent um, the turmoil the social turmoil that it created in in the country and put everyone against each other and stuff so it was it was a really good book to write but um, again I went overboard with the with the wordage and ended up being like 200,000 again ridiculous I could have chunked it to, um, two parts maybe I don't know but um, so yeah, I've, I enjoyed writing that one, and then I properly started when I was when I finished my uh, dentistry uh, college course, um, and that was back in 2018, which is when um, No Out got taken on. So yeah, that was the start of it basically. And um, you studied criminology at uni. So how did you end up being a dental technician? bad luck <laughs> no, i'm kidding if my, if my boss is watching i'm kidding i'm kidding um <laughs> like, because i'm i met bex and then i was working i was basically back in 2012 i got made redundant from a job that i really really loved that had i not been made redundant from i'd still be working today um i love that job and it was it was basically a, a customer service role within a, a company that did uh funding for training so anything to do with funding for, for uh, training people, we were sort of into that. Um, and then the, fold, the company folded, so I had to go and look for another job. And I was working at the railway tavern, the, the pub um, near me, um, at the same time as working at that place. So I ended up doing full-time work there and then going for as many interviews as I could and ended up going for 28 interviews before I got Elite Dental. Um, 28 interviews I think I've got eight jobs out of that out of those 28 which actually isn't isn't a bad percentage to be fair um and then I got my 29th interview was elite and I've been here ever since and then as part of me being taken on there I had to go and do this course because you you have to be certified um to work in dentist in dentistry industry that's good to know <laughs> So had you met Bex before or after joining Elite? Because she works there as well, no, doesn't no, she? No, she she works there. So I've I've um I got to know Gary through Bex, through meeting Bex. And then um I got married and then shortly after I got married, we I started at um Elite Dental and I've been there for five years now. So we've been married for six years. Yeah, so five years. So there you go. Oh, so what was the push then to to go right in properly and to push to I, get some published. I finished, I finished my course and I really wanted to get started on the writing. I didn't want to start writing until I'd finished the homework side of the because once I start writing, I get really um, obsessive about it, like I am now. Um, and then I don't like stopping and it puts me in a bad mood. So I decided to wait until I finished all my coursework um, before I started writing um, and then I started writing in the August of 18 and that's it I've been writing ever since every day so yeah and I think I've written 12 13 books now <laughs> even I can't right. remember <laughs> well five of those five of those are going to be published I've got the Southern Bells which has been published but self-published so that's six so yeah out of the 12 13 whatever it is I've had five or six done so yeah, it's not not too bad. No, it's amazing. Um, what was I just going to ask you as well? Oh, do you need to do anything to get yourself into a mood to write anything particularly romantic or horrible? No, not really. But I do often go for walks before I start a a chapter, um, so that I can 
just think about what I'm going to do, where, how I'm going to start it, what character I'm writing about, um, and going for a quick stroll around the block. Um, because since lockdown, I've been trying to keep the weight off. Um, so I go for walks around the block. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to do a block. So I do that three or four times a day. And you just try, just trying to keep the, the sort of weight back, which is a nightmare at the moment. So... Yeah. What's the Walking. most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? What sort of question is that? An evil one. Kerry question. That's not a me question. Blimey. I'm asking everyone. I want to know. What embarrassing. Do you know what? I can't even think what embarrassing thing I've done. Um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I want to know. I'm not letting you get away with it. Well, you can let your view, you can let your viewers know. Oh, okay, there you are. Um, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to let people know on that. I'll have to think on it. I'll, I don't know. I haven't got an answer for it at the moment. Okay, I'll keep asking you, just so you know, and you know I will as well. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> yeah, do right. Having everyone know my middle name's Charles. How about that? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's cool. Yeah, I really didn't know when you were interviewed. I kept meaning to ask you. Now I know. <laughs> I started calling um, Tony AJ because his name's Anthony John, but I can't call you DC. It's a bit weird. Detective Constable. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't see you doing that. Or, or DC, DC Comics, even better. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um... What was I going to ask you as well? I think I asked you last time about the if you're inviting four famous people to a dinner party, didn't I? Yeah, you've done that already. <laughs> okay, so I have to think of something more difficult to ask you then. Oh, uh, well, who's the fa most famous person you've ever met? Um, famous person I've ever met? Um, well, the this guy came to the railway when I was working there at the pub and he only came for a drink, the poor guy. And, uh, oh, damn, what's his name? He was in the fast show and he was in Harry Potter and he paid, he played, uh, the Weasley dad in Harry Potter. Hang on. I might have to look this one up. Tom, Tom, some, uh, something Tomkinson or something like that. I can't remember. Bear with me. I shall find it for you. That's your age. Anyway, so I was there. I was actually on duty at the time, and uh, one of the one of the bar staff was like, "Oh, is this him? It's him! It's him!" Getting all excited, and then she was like, oh, "I'm going to ask for an autograph," and I was like, "No, do not do that. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for you, for me, everyone." Here. Later. Later. Uh, doesn't follow him follow his footsteps and end up in prison and so he basically tells his son to not fight and just to walk away from trouble if you can basically and then he uh, the the son then goes and gets himself a girlfriend, Becky. And then um, while he's at work one day, she's at home and these, uh, the bad guys come and knocking at her door and then they end up um, taking it in terms of raping her. And this is in, this is in the song. So I was like, wow, you know, talking about raping. It they don't, doesn't actually say rape in the, in the song. And then um, basically it's about the, the son then finds out that, that she's been raped and he then goes and, and does over the the guys that's done it, but they they think he's a coward. So when he when he um, goes into the, the bar room, he turns and then goes and locks the door, and then he ends up taking out on them. And then he's sort of saying to his dad, you know, I'm sorry, but I couldn't turn my you know couldn't turn the other cheek that time. It's an absolute amazing song. But if you listen to the lyrics, it's just amazing. It's so old now, but it's it's great. And these are the kinds of songs that I'm listening to now because they're really old. But they're amazing. I just love the stories behind them. And it's made me, I've got 
two songs that I'm now going to write um, write a novel about as well. So one of my books in the near future will be called uh, The Piano Man with the Lying Eyes. So it's basically you've got two songs here, two really well-known songs. And I'm going to basically use some of the characters in the songs in the book. And it's going to be another detective one we'll have to find out who's done it. But it's going to include the piano man and it's going to include the girl from the lion eyes. And it's going to include the characters who are written about in that in those two songs. And I'm going to muddle them all up and some of them will be suspects. Others will be uh, friends of the people. And basically, yeah, I'm just going to come up with a um, storyline behind that. So that's another one that's going to I'll hopefully produce at some point as well. Wow, that sounds amazing. Thank you. You're full of ideas. That's incredible. Yeah, well, this, <laughs> the thing is, with these songs, they, they almost lend themselves to be written about in books as well. That's why I kind of look at it. I know that Pat um, Patricia Dixon likes music to come alive in her ideas for books. And I'm, I'm the same with that. So I sort of think, well, if I come up with, you know, if I can come up with, like, say, two, two songs, two or three songs, and then put them into a into a story i just think that's really good and i think people will quite enjoy that as well i think they'll quite enjoy like oh i've heard that that um line in a in a song and it's now in in a book but it's all it's nothing about you know the actual original song it's all completely different i just like mixing it all up and stuff so it's yeah it's going to be quite a good one to read that one sorry right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you, you have to write it first <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Well, I feel like I've learned something new about you today, then. No. Oh, what's that, then? Test time. Yeah. <laughs> you like country music? I didn't know. Yeah, I think I you've like mentioned it before. No, but... no one's going let, let me live that down now, are they? That's all right. John Richter likes his weird games and stuff, so we've all got our own little, little quirks. Boy. Yeah, I'm not admitting any of mine. <laughs> that's not fair, is it? Well, um, well, people think I'm weird it. enough anyway. My reputation precedes me as it is. That, I don't need to encourage true. them. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> and I have pink hair. So, you know, that's enough to be going on with for now. <laughs> I, do. I mean, if you want to ask me, you can ask me, but I'm not promising I'd answer. <laughs> no, I don't want to embarrass you, Donna. I really don't. You can if you want. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> you thought of any embarrassing instance yet? No. <clears throat> You even tried to think. You, you've got me for country and country music. You know, what more do you want? Jesus. That's embarrassing. There's nothing wrong with that. I listen to all sorts of music, so I'm sure there's country music in there somewhere. And who doesn't love Dolly? Well, yeah, exactly. She's amazing. She's an incredible woman, especially for literature and stuff as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. So it makes you cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this has gone weird now. <laughs> Only now. Now, fair play. <laughs> yeah, I've been weird forever. If, if you're only just noticing now, then that's all right. Okay. I think I haven't got anything else to ask you for now. Until next time. Yeah. So before we go, do you want to just tell everyone where they can find out more about you and your books? Oh, so uh, Facebook, I think the Brockwell author, that's the page, I believe. Um, through Instagram, it's DC Brockwell one. And for, I think it's DC Brockwell one. On, Twitter as well. Quite yeah. similar. Awesome. Thank, Thank you thanks. very much for inviting me on. Always a pleasure, thanks. Always. And then hopefully <laughs> I'll see you again in April for the you halfway. Will. I'll pencil you in now. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much.